thing on. That's great. Anybody out there in Somebody's out there in YouTube Facebook land. YouTube land, Facebook land. A couple of people that are out there. How are you guys doing? There's nobody out there yet on How was your day? On the on the YouTubes. Everybody, a couple minutes to log in and say hello. I'm excited to see you guys tomorrow. Uh, it was really cold today going and setting things up at the church and um, needing some things and watching God just answer our prayer immediately and just put smiles on our faces like hey look what the Lord did um, that was cool you know he is well pleased with his people worshiping him you guys ready for that waving at me over there. Not on the back of the phone, but in my living room. Welcome to my living room. Again. You ready? Lord Jesus, I thank you once again for this time and, um, Thank you for calling your people to turn from their wicked ways, repent, turn to you, and we thank you that you will heal our land. And Lord, as more and more uh, repent and cry out to you, I pray that you would hear our cries and you would heal, Lord, heal our land. I pray, Lord, that. Um, your people would be on their knees praying more than ever for services tomorrow online and, and in drive-ins across the country, across the world, as we celebrate your resurrection, Jesus. I pray that we would be praying against the spiritual attacks, against the personal attacks and the, um, the fears, the things that keep us from seeing you, Lord. Um, I pray that you would hold back the wind in the Estancia Valley, bring out the sunshine, um, even for that short time that we are outside worshiping you, Lord. I pray that you would meet us here tonight, you would anoint our pastor and speak to us once again. In Jesus' name, amen. So the song is called Resurrecting. Um... Honestly, I don't know who does it. I can't even tell you to look it up, but it's called Resurrecting.
not sure what's going on, but praise the Lord. He is victory. Amen. All right. Um, interesting that, uh, <laughs> interesting that Leanna just prayed against the spiritual battles and all of those sort of things. Um, and then uh, for those of you that are watching on YouTube, um, not sure what happened uh, during uh, the song, uh, during, during worship there, um, we had somebody, um, I'm not, I'm not sure what happened, uh, but it said that our, our feed was shut down remotely. Um, and then uh, I got a text from somebody that was actually watching the YouTube feed and it said, um, it said that our YouTube feed violated some terms of service from YouTube. I have no idea what that means. We've not violated any terms of service. Um, uh, matter of fact, just uh, two days ago, we were reading up on the newest stuff that they sent out an email and said, here's our new stuff. And, and uh, if you get shut down, then just be patient. We'll try to get you guys back up. There are people uh, right now who are just sort of making claims of uh, copyright infringement or making claims that somebody is saying something that shouldn't be allowed on YouTube. And that's happening across the board right now, not, not just with churches, but in general, that's happening. Um, so I don't know what happened, but it uh, looks like um, YouTube has taken us off the air now uh, from the last text I got here. So if you're on Facebook, um, you can still see us. You can still hear us. That's awesome. If you're on YouTube, uh, it looks like it's just completely down. So um, uh, pulled for violating terms. No, no idea what that means. We've not violated anything. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Look, here's, here's the thing. Uh, let, we should kind of get this out and then pray and get into our, our study for tonight. Um, listen, every time we come to Easter in general, uh, there is always an intense spiritual battle that leads up to Easter Sunday. There just is. And I can tell you uh, that, that many, uh, many Christians, uh, many people in our church, our own family, uh, has definitely been, um, been dealing with the spiritual battles that take place leading up to, um, to Easter Sunday. Um, even things like, uh, uh, and, I, and I believe there, there are spiritual battle uh, issues, even things like today, if you're here in New Mexico and watching this, uh, our, uh, you know, the, the emergency uh, messaging system from, from our, from our uh, state uh, put out uh, a couple of messages today saying, it's not safe to gather together and it's not safe at church either. Um, why they directed it specifically at churches, uh, I can only guess it's because tomorrow's Easter Sunday. Why they felt the need to do that, uh, I don't really know. Um, but I just assume it to be part of the spiritual battle that takes place, you know. Um, I, I, would, I would guess that there are a number of people who are anxious to get out of their homes. A number of people in churches across our country and across our state who are anxious to do things like drive in church, uh, which a number of churches are doing tomorrow morning. And, and it would seem that the, you know, that there is a spiritual battle taking place to prevent that from taking place, to cause fear, uh, to cause distress. I know a number of people, uh, you got a hold of me, got a hold of other pastors that I spoke to uh, earlier today, uh, calling and saying, what, what are we going to do? There's a new, there's a new rule from the governor. There's not a new rule from the governor, just so everybody's clear. Uh, the, the governor has not implemented any new rules whatsoever. The same rules apply. Uh, no more than five people grouped together, congregated together. If you're in your car, you're safe. Otherwise, they would have shut down the, you know, the, the highways and the streets and all those sort of things. Um, you, you know, uh, doing drive-in church is something that not only uh, meets all of the standards and recommendations, uh, but is also something that the governor herself, uh, if you saw our post on Facebook and our church app, uh, the governor herself applauded such efforts um, for the church still to be able to come together in innovative ways, like doing a drive-in church like we're going to do tomorrow morning at 10. So I just want to put everybody's, you know, kind of at ease there. Uh, if you're in your own car and you have the windows rolled up, uh, you're as safe as you would be driving down the highway with your, with, in your car. So um, and safer, I would say, than going to the grocery store. You're not in contact with anybody other than uh, who's already in your home. So I uh, just kind of want to put that out there. Um, I would guess, uh, for those of you that are live with us right now on Facebook, um, I would guess that what this means is that YouTube probably won't lift the, uh, 
the, the ban on our account um, until probably um, um, sometime after Easter. Um, I'm sure it just works that way. So um, I, I don't know what to say about that. I, I'm really sorry. What we'll do is uh, we'll try to video, a normal video tomorrow for, for uh, YouTube so that we can put that up there. Uh, and we'll Facebook Live tomorrow um, as well as doing drive-in church with the FM transmitter. So um, we will have church tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. And uh, we're going to just continue serving the Lord and following the Lord. And, um, you know, I, I want to encourage you all with something, though. And that is, uh, I want to encourage everybody, don't fear. Don't be, don't be fearful in this time. Um, there, is, there is a lot of fear out there. You know, I, I uh, made the mistake of just kind of looking at the news a little bit for a few minutes today. And it, and it seemed to me as if every news story was designed in such a way to cause the reader to be scared, to be frightened, to be worried. Um, we don't fear. Um, I, I, I do want to reiterate something, and that is, uh, the, the, for those people who have you know, uh, gotten sick with this thing, um, there's an incredible success rate. It has is, it is only been those people, it seems, that had other underlying issues that, uh, that, this, that this illness um, you know, caused more, more problems with. Uh, I'm being careful not to use the term. Uh, I know some YouTubers and Facebook channels um, got taken down just from using the term of the thing that it is that's going around right now. So, um, you know, don't, don't be, don't be, don't be fearful. I know that we're seeing a lot of numbers of, uh, you know, deaths and those sort of things. Um, but there's also information coming out of, uh, the White House and, and such saying that, um, if anybody even happened to get sick with this thing while being sick with something else that really threatened their life, like, you know, cancer or some other, you know, uh, disease or illness like that, um, that on the certificate, death certificate, it would be written down as this thing that's going around right now. So um, there seems to be some, some tactic of bringing fear. And I would remind everybody that we've not been given the spirit of, of fear, uh, you know, but of, but of a sound mind, you know. And, and th there's not a reason for us to fear. God is in perfect control of our lives. And I want everybody to, to consider that even as we look at God being in perfect control of the situation on the Saturday that took place there between uh, Good Friday and, um, yeah, that's, that's okay. I'm making all kinds of noises here, uh, between uh, Good Friday and, and Easter Sunday. So with all those sort of things said, you know, for, forgive me for, uh, for going on with that, but I, I, I do just want to make sure that everybody's clear on those sort of things. So, um, all right, get my timer going here. Let's pray and then let's get into this. Father, we, um, we do thank you. We thank you that you love us. We um, pray that you would continue to meet with us tonight, that you would encourage our hearts, that you would settle our minds, Lord. Um, God, we do pray that you would show yourself to be victorious in the various spiritual battles that many of us um, go through in our day-to-day -day lives that, that the church is involved with in so many areas of the world today, uh, even with having services tomorrow. Um, Lord, I know that there are many churches uh, throughout our land who have been told outright that they're not even allowed to do a drive-in church. And, um, and it sure... It sure is interesting, Lord, that it seems to be directed at churches and no one else. Um, God, we know who you are. We know who we serve, the risen one, the true and living God. We, we, we trust in you and in you alone in, in these days just like any other days. We would ask that, um, that you would have your hand upon your church, that you would have your hand upon your people. Um, God, we, we ask, God, that you would um, minister to us tonight through your word. And that as we end our time tonight, that you would continue ministering to us, God, um, throughout the night, preparing our hearts for, for the, the beautiful resurrection day that, that is upon us, Lord. As, as, uh, as it's been said uh, quite often recently, Sunday is coming. Lord, have your hand upon our time. Have your hand upon each person. Uh, remove worry, remove fear. 
increase our faith in you. Um, we love you, Lord. We, we love one another. We love the world around us. We just ask, God, that you would have your hand upon each one of us and speak to us this night, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Let me get this started here. Okay. We left off, um, we left off last night uh, with that scene of uh, Jesus uh, being laid in the tomb. Uh, I'll, I'll remind you, I'll read to you from, from the account out of Matthew. Uh, Matthew 27, verse 57 through 61. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Notice this, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. There in Luke's gospel, we get a little more detail of what took place at on Friday night, last night, if you will, and, and we see that the women were paying close attention to the scenario here. Luke 23, verses 55 and 56 say, the women who had come with him from Galilee, with Jesus from Galilee, followed and saw the tomb and how his body was laid. They saw the body in the tomb. When they returned, uh, excuse me, then they returned and prepared spices and ointments on the Sabbath, they rested. That would be Saturday. That's today. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the commandment. Understand that, that as, we, as we look at what takes place on Saturday, the women, the women knew where they had laid the body. So did the Jewish leaders. They were fully aware. The Romans, fully aware. And look at th this little thing that takes place that we're going to look at tonight out of Matthew 27, verses 62 through, through 63. But th this, this little event that takes place between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. On the Sabbath day, it was supposed to be a holy day to the Lord, a day to rest, a day to reflect upon the Lord. But, but more than that, it was the Passover Sabbath. Of all, of all days, it was the Passover Sabbath. It was meant to be a holy remembrance of God delivering the Israelites out of bondage and leading them to the promised land. This is, this is no time to be, to be dealing with, with Gentiles if you're a good Jew, especially if you're a chief priest. Or to do any sort of business whatsoever. You have to understand this is how it is. I'm not saying that, that we should. I'm just saying this, is, this was the Jewish mindset. But there's certainly no place for doing business on the Sabbath, on the Saturday. It's supposed to be a holy convocation. But the men that we're about to read about here tonight in Matthew 27, these men have lost all sight of God's holiness. And they proved it with their behavior. Look, look at how this plays out. Matthew 27 Starting in verse 62, it says, The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. And they said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said, While he was still alive, after three days I will rise. Do, do, you, see, do you see what's taking place here? They, they said, We remember this Jesus said, that I'll rise on the third day. Jesus has said repeatedly throughout the Gospels, all four of the Gospel narratives, that Jesus would rise again, that he would rise again from the grave. He already said to his disciples, here's what's going to happen, guys. I'm going to go. They're going to mock me. They're going to scorch me. They're going to crucify me. And on the third day, I'm going to rise again. And these Jewish leaders, they knew. They remembered that. And so, one, they're either fearful that Jesus was actually going to do what he said he was going to do, or two, they're telling the truth about what, they, what they're worried about when they say this. Therefore, order the tomb, verse 64, to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people that he has risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. Did, did you see what they said? They said, uh, uh, Pilate, now this is the Sabbath day. Please, please take note of this. 
These are Jewish leaders. These are religious leaders. The people that are supposed to be setting the standard and teaching the people of God. The Sabbath day is no day for work, no day for business deals. And they're over there making a business deal with Pilate. And notice what happens. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers, meaning I'll, I'll, honor the, I'll grant the request. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure, listen, by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Well, there's some background that's very helpful for us in, in, in these things here. First of all, it's really interesting that the guy that gives us the report about all of this happens to be Matthew. We don't see this full report of, of uh, the Jews going and asking uh, Rome, the uh, Pilate, the Romans, to go in to seal off and to guard the tomb. We don't see that in Mark's gospel. We don't see it in Luke's. We don't see it in, in, in John's gospel. We see it in Matthew's gospel of all the places. And that's an interesting thing, because if you remember who Matthew was, Matthew was formerly a tax collector. Matthew was a guy who was a Jew by birth, but was a betrayer of his people and robbed his people by collecting taxes and more taxes than what he was supposed to collect from the Jews in order to pay Rome and in order, in, in order to make his own pockets fat. Here's Matthew. He is a changed man, but he still seems to have some sort of friends, some sort of influence. He still knows people that, that work for Rome. And somebody in the Roman government gave the information to Matthew in such a way that he felt important to, to relay all of this. And, and so here he is, and he, and he writes this down for us. He's the only one of the gospel writers to include this little detail about how all this went down. But I want you again to, to notice that this takes place on the Sabbath. It's the Sabbath. The chief priests and the Pharisees, they are violating the Sabbath. And they're doing so by doing work and by meeting with the Romans. But notice that they say, could you please do all of this for us? And Pilate responds with, you have a guard. What this means is that the tomb was very secure. Let me go into a little more detail. There was a special guard unit of the Romans. Sort of, we would call them today, a special forces kind of operation. And they would be 16 Roman soldiers, the elites. Okay, we're talking like, you know, for, for us, we might say, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the guys that are, uh, I don't know, Green Berets, right? Or, or uh, Navy SEALs or, you know, something to that effect. They were, they were really the elite soldiers. And it was a group of 16 of them. And what they did, they, they carried around the same, the same kind of weaponry. They had a long sword, they had a short sword, and they had a spear. And these soldiers, they were held to a completely different standard, a much higher standard than the rest of the soldiers and the rest of the centurions. In fact, it was said that if a high-ranking official or a high-ranking officer came while they were keeping watch over something that they were called to be keeping watch over, and just one of them had fallen asleep, and sometimes they were called to keep watch for, you know, 24, 48, 36 hours at a time. They were not supposed to be sleeping at all. And if they were found to be keeping watch over something and just one of them had fallen asleep, the punishment would be that the other 15 would be killed and the one would be made an example of. If, if one of the 16 happened to leave their post for some reason, Maybe they went home to check on their family or whatever the thing was. All 16 would be put to death. And this is important information for us because what we're going to see is that Pilate said, or what we saw there is that Pilate said, you have a guard. The Jews have come and they've said, we need you to set up a guard. We heard this guy say that on the third day he's going to rise again. Well, when Jesus raises again on the third day, tomorrow morning, Resurrection Sunday, Easter morning, when he rises from the grave... They can't say his people stole him away. The disciples took the body away. They can't say that. They'll, they'll say that, and they've said that all of these years later, 2,000 years later, there is still that, that thing that people say, that, oh, Jesus didn't really die, and it's, it's, you know, they took the body, or he was just sleeping, and he woke up, and all that. No, 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 you don't understand. Look at how this whole thing worked. It said that they were to seal it. 
Okay, they were they were to seal it. They went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting the guard. Verse sixty six me uh, says there. Well, setting the seal meant that they rolled the stone into the groove to close off the opening of the tomb. Now listen, they would then use mortar or a wax to make sure that it couldn't possibly move whatsoever. Then they would follow that up by putting ropes going across the stones with more mortar or wax in the center of the rope. They would then put the seal of Rome upon the, the, the wax or upon the mortar there to ensure that it was not tampered with. So, so this thing was rolled into place. And these stones, it takes more than one person to roll these stones into place, okay? I've, I've been to, I, I got to go to Israel, I got to see these stones, and one person doesn't roll these, okay? So it's rolled into place, and then there is mortar or wax all the way around. And what this does also is it closes off any airflow. It makes it completely, you know, airtight. But if they didn't just do that. Then they put ropes across it, almost like a, you know, think of like caution tape in our day and age, right? But those ropes would then be attached to the backside, and then there would be more mortar, more wax, and then in that wax, to make sure that nobody could be monkeying around with it, they would take the seal of Rome, the symbol of Rome, the insignia of Rome, and they would stamp that in there. So that if one of the ropes happens to be moved to get into the tomb, it would crack that seal and everybody would know that it was tampered with. So, so the, uh, the idea here is that this thing is sealed up airtight. It's got the special forces guard around it. And what a crazy idea. Special forces to guard a dead man? No, no, no. Because Jesus had power to lay down his life and he has power to take it up again, as we'll see tomorrow morning. Amen. But, but this tomb is sealed off in such a way that it is impossible to tamper with without somebody knowing and without somebody dying as a result of it. See, by Roman law, if a person broke the seal without permission, then the punishment was that they would be crucified upside down. If you broke the seal, but they couldn't find you, but they knew that you were the one that broke the seal, they would go to your village and crucify every man, woman, and child in your village as, a, a, as retaliation. So understand that this is not like, you know, oh, they sealed it and they left and then after three days they came back and oh, Jesus was gone. So surely somebody could have taken the bottle or the, the, the body here. There's, there's still people today, though, who try to say that Jesus' body was stolen out of the tomb because they just can't bring themselves to believe the account of the resurrection is found in the word of God. There is one uh, that, that survives even today, and it's called the swoon theory. And the idea is that Jesus was certainly tired, certainly beat up, uh, but he actually had taken a narcotic so that the pain wouldn't be so bad. And so when they pulled him off the cross, he just laid down with this narcotic in him, and it looked as if he was sleeping. It slowed down his pulse. And it, this, is, this is a crazy story that people tell. And then the disciples got in there, and they gave him the antidote, and he rose up, and then they, you know, they like picked him up and helped him out as he limped along out of the... Thing. This is impossible with the scenario that we have before us. The, the, the thing was sealed up tight, and nobody was getting into that tomb. Now, if you were fully alive and fully, you know, God come in the flesh, fully man and fully God, well, you could get out no matter what. Mm -hmm. But no mere mortal was ever going to get in or out of this thing without there being serious repercussions. The, the, the idea that the account of the crucifixion and the, the body being placed in the tomb and, and it you know, and it being sealed and, and, and all the idea that that has somehow been made up just doesn't line up with history. It just doesn't line up with the recorded record that we have. It's not just the Bible that indicates that Jesus was laid in a tomb and that the tomb was sealed up. This is, this is something that we can bank it all on. We can trust this story because it is true. Amen. And it's important for us because tomorrow morning we're going to celebrate that Jesus bursted forth in glorious light. Like, it's going to be beautiful. 
but it makes tomorrow morning that much more profound and that much more powerful when we see all the effort that was made to keep Jesus' body from being tampered with. Again, let me read the story to you again. Verse 62 of Matthew 27. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate. And they said, Sir, we remember how that imposter said while he was still alive, Notice, they believe he's dead while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people that he has risen from the dead. And the last fraud will be worse than the first. And so Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting the guard. Guys, this is one of the most fantastic setups to Easter morning that there ever could be. You realize that tomorrow morning as we come together and we celebrate Easter, as Jesus rose from the dead, that validated everything he ever said and every work that he ever did. It validated who he was. It validated who he is. And it validates, it validates the offer of forgiveness and salvation for all who would place their faith in him. That's what the resurrection does. It proves it all to be true. The Jews and the Romans worked really really, really hard to make sure that nobody tampered with the body. Nobody tampered with the body. Mm -hmm. The disciples did not. The apostles did not. The Jews did not. The Romans did not. Tomorrow morning we'll look at the account here out of Matthew and see just how they tried to say that really the disciples took the body of Jesus. Guys, it was impossible. It, the, the, the setup was just too good. Amen. Tonight I wanted to keep it a little bit shorter on the, on the teaching side. And again, just sort of to encourage everybody. We, we, we are not a people who fear. We are a people who, who have a sound mind. We are a people who, who are filled with the with the Holy Spirit of God. We are a people filled with the love of God. We are a people filled with the truth of God's word. And we don't have anything to fear. We don't have to fear if we belong to Christ. And that's the beauty of, of, of all that we're going to be celebrating tomorrow morning. So I would encourage you, make, make the drive. Come and join us. It'll be so special and so sweet and so exciting to be able to look out your car window and wave to the other people you're used to shaking hands with or hugging, but please stay in your cars. Um, look, I, I gotta tell you, it's very important. Um, I just wanna end with this, very important that we follow all of the guidelines that are set forth. And let me explain why. It's not because I'm worried that everybody will get coronavirus. Okay, that's not it. And there it was, I said it, they'll probably take it down. But it's not that I'm worried about all of that. What, what, what concerns me more than that is, if we are in violation of those things, then we are now the target of the media. And if we're the target of the media, it's not just our little church, guys. It's going to be every other church there is. Right now, they are just going hog wild, looking for, for religious groups and churches in particular, it would seem, from the news that I've seen. They're just looking for somebody that's in violation so they can all point their fingers and say, see, look at the Christians. So we're gonna stay in our cars. We'll wave to each other and we'll honk at each other and flash our headlights at each other and all those sort of things. But we're gonna follow the guidelines, we're gonna follow the rules so that we can have a safe, a happy, a blessed time tomorrow morning. So with all of that said, um, you know, I uh, will close in prayer. And I'm um, really excited to see you guys tomorrow. We, we spent a lot of time setting up 
um, getting sound and FM transmitters and all those things working and praying and um, we're really, really excited to, to see everybody even through their car windows tomorrow. So um, let's pray. Father, we, we are so grateful that you love us. We're grateful, God, for your peace upon us. We're grateful that it's by your stripes that we are healed. And we pray, God, that you would heal each heart, each mind, each, each person spiritually, God. That you would bring healing to those that are physically in need of healing from you tonight, Lord. Uh, whether they have allergies or a cold or uh, some, other, uh, some other illness, some other sickness, some disease. God, we ask that you would be gracious and that you would bring healing um, out of the abundance of your love. God, we, we would ask that you would work on our hearts tonight and that you would make us ever more expectant than ever, God, for, for not just Easter, but for your coming. Because you have already risen, and now we just await your arrival to come back for us. I pray that you would encourage us with that. That soon and very soon, we are going to see the King, as the old song goes. What a beautiful, beautiful day that's going to be. Lord, I, I pray, God, that you would just um, have your hand upon the weather tomorrow. Uh, I know the, the weather report says it's supposed to be windy, but it's windy every day in the Estancia Valley. Lord, I pray that you would be gracious and, and hold the wind back long enough for us to get through service and say amen. And after the last amen, Lord, well, uh, you go ahead and, and, and let the wind go. But we just pray that you would do that, Lord, and be gracious. God, watch over our homes, protect us, provide for our needs, Lord. And um, continue, God, just to have your hand upon us. Lord, um, I pray for every person that, that might be watching even tonight that doesn't know who you are. They, they, they might know of you, but they don't know you personally. God, I, I pray that they would see that you're in perfect control of all things, just as you were in perfect control as the tomb was sealed that was not going to stop your work at all, that was not going to stop your plan at all, because your plan all along was to save the lost. And so I, I, would, I would just ask that if you're one that doesn't know who Jesus is, it, hold on for tomorrow. It's going to be a beautiful day. But if you don't know Jesus tonight, then I'll just say outright, no, no resharing of anything. I'm just going to say outright tonight, if you don't know Jesus, and I want you to pray with me right now. Father, I'm a sinner. I thank you for sending Jesus to die for my sin. And I pray that you would forgive me of everything I have ever done against you and against your law. Please, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please, God, do a work in my life, causing me to follow after you and able to stand firm in your spirit, following after Jesus. Please take my life and do with it what you have always planned for it to be and, and, and use my life in an incredible way for your glory and for your kingdom. For I surrender to you and I thank you for your love, your salvation, and your forgiveness which I receive by faith in Jesus' name right now. Father, thank you for tonight. Have your hand upon us as we go through the rest of this night, the next few hours until we gather again in the morning. And just bless our best efforts, Lord. Go above and beyond anything that, 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 that we could have done in our own ability, Lord. That you would get the glory in it and that we would be built up together in you. For we love you and thank you and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Well, the Lord bless you guys and keep you. Um, we'll see you all in the morning. Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock. Uh, you might want to get there a few minutes early so you can get parked in the parking lot. And uh, that's it. Um, we're dismissed.